Awesome, mate. Well, let's start off by talking a little bit about Rube Morgue Records. Um, I know we've talked sure. about this before, but and there might be different people listening in this time. So tell, sure, us, sure. tell us a little bit about how your relationship with Rue Morgue Records started off. Uh, look, you know, it's a, Melbourne is a small community, even though it's a big place. It's a sort of small music community and a lot of people, I mean, people know people, you know. Um, and with social media, you, 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 you learn what's going on and around the, around the place. And John, he, you know, he's he's really good at promoting um, local music. And I just I just started seeing more and more of, of what he was doing and hearing more about him. And so I reached out to him one day and just and just said, you know, I run a studio in Melbourne and I work with a lot of local artists also. Um, and you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea at some point if we, you know, just just stay in touch and see if we can collaborate and help each other out, you know? And, um, and of course he was all for it and it's just kind of stemmed from there, I think. So volume one of Rue Morgue Murders did so well. Now we're up to volume two. Yeah. Why did you feel that you needed to be involved with, uh, volume two? Oh, look, you know, um, you got to go with what's working, right? And, um, and definitely John was promoting it like, crazy and it made a big impact around town um so i wanted to be involved in volume two as in many as many levels as i could so you know involving the studio um helping find artists and obviously um being involved myself musically i thought was uh you know a good thing to do um and a win-win for everyone so how did you and john go about finding artists because there are so many artists out there at the moment that are are looking to get their work out there especially sure. with the shit storm that the last 12 months has been so yeah. how did you guys go about finding artists for this compilation well you know obviously some some artists was it was pretty obvious there were artists i've worked with so i was you know sort of I would just sort of think, well, who have I worked with? And, you know, this artist was good or that artist was good. Um, so I'd just suggest those people and get him to check them out. Some artists, he would he would find himself and we would just sort of discuss it um, via email or Facebook and um, and send links and whatnot. And, and uh, you know, more often than not, um, it was on the money, I thought, you know. In the end, it ended up being uh, quite a, uh, a very alternative style selection of, of bands and artists so um i think it's um it's very cohesive for what we've chosen and have you always been a fan of the compilation cd or compilation vinyl i know for a lot of us we grew up with cds being on the front cover of magazines and that's how sure. we discovered new bands so were you a fan of compilation cds and vinyl and did you have a huge collection as a youngster you, you know what? i've always been a fan of that stuff but i, I grew up in the era of cassette tapes so uh I, I, you know, I would have like, you know, 1985 on fire and it would have Crowded House and bands like that yep. and In Excess, you know, and, um, and so, I, and I loved that stuff as a kid, you know, but they were all these big bands you'd see, you know, on TV and, um, uh, so to see it on a more of a local level, A, it's great and B, you don't, there's not many labels around town doing that right now, um, at all, so, um, it's definitely needed and uh, it's exciting, you know? It's great. It's great to be involved. Yeah. And do you think we might see more of this kind of thing now too because of what's happened in the last 12 months? Because so many artists out there have almost had to put their careers on hold almost for 12 months. They've got a sure. bunch of new material and are compilations like this the best way to, to get their name out there even while we're in semi-lockdown? It's definitely another way to do it, and it's definitely a good way to do it. Um, I think we'll see an explosion of new music in the next six months. And, you know, like the compilation concept, it just depends on, on, on what level the label or whoever it is that's putting it out, putting it together, can can do. So um, I think we'll see a lot more, you know, compilation playlisting, playlist streaming will be the, the new standard. Um, but guys like John that are, that are sticking true to, to a, you know, vinyl format, I mean, that's fantastic. It's such a, a great classic art form to do is to, you know, to make an actual vinyl record. But I think we'll see a lot more, you know, playlisting. I think that's where it's at. Yeah. So you've also got one of your own tracks on there as well with your band. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your band, uh, first of all, and a little bit about the history of the band and sure. yeah, what they felt about having their track included on the compilation as well. Well, um, my band is called Cicada Stone. Uh, we 
kind of came about me uh, about 2013. Um, and it was just sort of born out of, you know, what's the next thing to do, you know? Um, originally, we put out a record in 2016, uh, uh, which had um, Adam Pedretti and Mick Quee, uh, in the band, and they've since moved on to other things. Um, now Jared Medwin and uh, Tommy Sunset are in the band, and we've recorded a new uh, record. Um, but I thought it was really great to get involved um, with this project and to and to throw a song into the into the ring for John. And he was he was gracious to accept it. And uh, 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 all in all, it's it's worked out really good. Now the song itself, it, it certainly fits in with the other bands. Uh, hold its own if you know what i mean and um and it's also great to it's great timing to help promote our record that's coming out uh soon as well so you know with john's record coming out and our record coming out pretty much you know month a month apart um it's all you know it's all good yeah it's all good promotion so tell us a little bit about the single that you've got on the compilation uh what can people sure. expect to hear on the single and also what's it all about like what was inspiring sure. you guys lyrically and musically with it well, the song's called Dime a Dozen, um, which is, it's on our album. It's not actually, it's not actually a single from our album, but that's why I thought it was a great idea to pass a song to John that, um, wasn't going to be like promoted with our label. Um, that was a song that could be freshly promoted uh, in its own right, which I, I still think it, you know, it holds its own compared to the, the singles as such that we've got. Um, it's a real, real sort of slow grindy heavy sort of song with a big, um, uplifting chorus um and it's you know it's a song about suppression um in society and and forcing or wanting to force change but not really knowing how because you know we're all kind of like individuals but you know coming together is it's hard is, is easier said than done awesome well matt to finish off what would you like to say to people out there why should they go out and grab a copy of room morgue volume two because they they should uh, anyone should go out and grab a copy if they love uh first of all any sort of alternative rock music i think you'll find there's lots of great gems on this record um secondly supporting local music uh is, is a huge deal buying physical copies where the, where the money goes uh to the artists uh, is definitely far better than streaming it um and supporting a local label that is you know still getting off the ground in, in the big picture um and has really done he's really he's really come a long way in a real short time and this will only help the label um if people are buy the, buy the record it only helps support the label more and more definitely well mate thank you so much for chatting to us today it's been an absolute pleasure, pleasure.